episode of At The Bar, this time for Orin Inc. We're at PDAC 2019 in Toronto, and we're at the bar on the floor of PDAC. Davidson & Co. has been gracious yet again to allow us to host um, at their booth. And as always, I'm joined by Brent Cook with Exploration Insights and Vicki Fulp, the mercenary geologist, and our special guest today, Kai Hoffman with Orin Inc. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, salute, eh? <laughs> salute. Cheers. PDAC. Yet another PDAC is in front of us. Kai, welcome. Thank you. Um, you're looking uh, flashy today. That I got excited. This is probably the ugliest tie I've ever seen. <laughs> Where'd you well, get that? You'll notice I said flashy. <laughs> well, I'm well, honest. I, you know, I have a loud voice, so I think I should be permitted to wear a loud tie. And, and I got it at Wally World, of course, my favorite Wally store. All right. But <laughs> if it bothers you that much, Brent, I'll take it off. Thank you. There, there we go. I really it's time to let it's time to take it off take it it's the off end of the day anyway. we're at the bar yeah absolutely yeah. so yeah. i wanted to talk today and you had mentioned this topic and i completely agree with you about uh geo gibberish you call it when you get a press release um from a company where there's a geologist who's written it or a geologist who's the ceo and it's so technical that even other geologists can't always understand and, and kai you're not a geologist so you I'm not. probably have something to say on this but mickey this was your idea so why yeah, don't you lay well, the ground of those epiphanies when it's 4 a.m. in the morning and I wake up and it hits me, you know. So it, it was promulgated by uh, a press release that was a thousand and seven words long. That was all about geology and something called a back away relog of core. And I don't even know what it was. It was so technical that I didn't even read it. And I'm a geologist with 30 plus years of field experience. And I thought, geo gibberish. And we need to, we need to rid the business of so, geo gibberish. But I know, Brett, you and Joe look for the geology. I mean, well, when we put press releases out, you want that detail. I think, I think a press release should address two different types of people. There should be a quick summary up top that says, this is what we did, this is why it's important, and then there should be a whole section for people that want to get more technically into it that says, you know, here's here's the details, here's a link to the maps, cross sections, etc. I mean, I, I had a meeting today with Verify, I don't know if you know who they are. Yeah, and, uh, sure. And they, they're, they're trying to get into the newsletter section of it too, so that when you put out a news release, you can link through Verify and see where that drill hole is in 3D and that sort of thing. So I think that information is, is critical and that's one of the screens I use actually in, in, in evaluating a company is if I get a news release and there's no cross sections or maps or, or details. We get an email right away. I know that. So. Yeah, I, it's like, okay, that's an easy screen. Either they don't know what they're doing, they're hiding something. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you gotta you got to fill the void for two types of people. Gotcha. Now, that's a very good point with the press release and then actually linking directly to the map because I'm, you know, you follow 100 companies and you get press releases. Sometimes they drill three, four, five projects at the time. It's super confusing as an investor. But when you can pinpoint, okay, this is where the hole is exactly at, and I love what Verify is doing. Okay, this is what it means. You can understand, okay, they just extended the asset by, or the, the yeah. ore body, or the, the mineralization by another 100 meters, 200 meters. That would be super helpful. Do you ever use core box? Uh, I do use it, yeah, when I see massive intervals, and then, uh, or that's, longer That's intervals. a good tool as well. Yeah, core box shot now. Yeah. That's a good tool. Here, here's what I, I think that you, companies and run by geologists need to realize that for every one geologist reads a press release, there's probably a hundred non-technical yes. speculators. So Brent's idea, I think, is, is great. You can put in all that stuff that only is, is destined to be read by the geologists and analysts at the end of the press release. But, but don't be using a bunch of geological jargon that, yeah. that I, I bet you half the people on this, this floor that are geologists cannot correctly explain the difference between a high sulfidation and a low sulfidation uh, epithermal system. So well, one's high, one's low. There you go, that's it. <laughs> but as we know... One's on top, one's on the bottom. Yeah, duh. <laughs> do as we you want to be a pitcher or a catcher? <laughs> Geologists can are fall in love with the geology of their project, and that tends to come out in their press releases. Yeah. And I agree, they should be reined in a bit, and it takes the industry time to adapt to it. And, and headlines are very important. They are key. <laughs> headlines are key because if you get uh, 
As many press releases as Brent and Kai and I do on yes. a daily basis, a lot of times, unless I own the stock, you better write me a sexy headline or are you going to remain in the spam box? Agreed. So from CEO through geologists, I wanted to go to the opposite side and talk about promoter CEOs. And um, working with Skeena, you know, we just had a great press release. We put, you know, almost four million ounces on the books between combined and uh, indicated and inferred. And you'll see more hype from a drill hole with great results and a company that has no ounces on the books than a company who puts out a, a solid resource. So I wanted to talk about why the market, you know, favors an exciting drill hole and a new discovery more so than actual ounces in the ground. Brent? Well, I mean, with your single drill hole, blue's the sky's the limit. With a company that's putting out an updated resource, I mean, the sky is not the limit. The sky is right there in front of you. And so there's just not that sex appeal. There's not that, you know, the, the gambling aspect of it. So that's really what it comes down to. Plus, a lot of people don't, in my opinion, don't really know how to read, understand a drill hole release. And we see this, you know, on a weekly basis. Someone will put out a drill hole and it's flash and the stock goes up. I go and look in the background of it and you can see in the techno reports and data, well, hang on, there's like six holes all and around this. And you tear it apart. And they've already drill, drilled <laughs> yeah. a dozen, but they only report a couple of yes. good ones. And, and it's just it's just promotional. It, it, it's what I call the negligee effect. So a new discovery uh, has a negligee on it yes. until you get a bunch of drill holes and, and pull off the negligee. You don't quite Know for, what might but be for underneath. the for the mental, for the millennials in the audience, what's a negligee? <laughs> I'm no. sure you have an opinion on oh, this, I but I want to get off negligees, so let's go back to the original question I had. It's actually a good combination of what we said before. Mickey said he's looking for flashy headlines. You talked about gambling, and I think that's exactly the middle ground right there. A lot of people look for the flashy headlines. They see 20 meters of 40 grams. They jump in. They buy it early in the morning before even reading the press release because they know something's going to happen. And, that and then effect, the algorithm or, starts. Or it got leaked early, so they buy the day yeah, before. Yeah, but then we saw the volume yesterday yes. or the day before. Yes. And then it's the gamblers as well. So I hinted at that earlier before we started recording. We, in 2016, 2017, we had groups that did 10, 20, 30 placements a week just to get positioned in warrants and play the market. And they can't do that right now. There's no opportunity for them to deploy capital. Yeah. So to achieve a return, they're playing these results without reading the underlying results just for and what it means. Like, where is that whole lot? Does not even make any sense? Has it been reported within a 100 meter section that's already been well known? Like, so do you think that's adding to that. Where, because we're at a certain place in the in the cycle and that you know we're at the bottom of a bear market will this change will companies start to get more value for their assets as opposed to flashy drill results as we hit towards or I guess if we go towards a bull everyone any good news could just have a bump what do you think? Folks all votes yep. in a bull market. I think what it tells you though because we saw this a lot last year was yes. I don't know there must have been a dozen companies that, that just you know put out some a flash drill hole even, even the golden yeah. triangle was terrible. I mean, it was just, yeah. it, it yes. love this a picture. It went right back down. I think pictures of drill core should not be allowed in press releases. Well, I, I don't think that, that companies should be allowed to issue <laughs> press releases on visible logging of core without, without assays. I completely and, agree. And this happens all the time. And then, I mean, you get, unless you got visible gold, you, you, you really don't, don't what know you what you and got, it's, and no it's, matter and what it's, the alteration and looks it's, like. Not necessarily representative of the deposit. Exactly. You could have a speck of VG and everyone goes crazy, and it's nowhere else to be found in the deposit. Oh, absolutely. And that drives yep. me crazy. Yep. So, on that, I wanted to get just a little bit on what your outlook is for this year. How are we feeling about 2019 so far? We've had Roundup already, now we're into PDAC. What are we going to feel for the market? Are we excited about this year? We're all screwed. <laughs> I don't. I can't How do you sell a newsletter year. subscription? Yeah, right? No, no. I, on, a, on a serious note, I, I, knew I you were a skeptic. I didn't know you were a cynic. So. I, I think I, I'm. Joe and I are both were fairly positive on precious metal prices going forward. Yep. More or less neutral on base metals. But I think a lot of things are going on that is going to put pressure on the dollar, and the reciprocal gold should go up. So that's kind of where we're at. 
I would agree with respect to gold. I'm probably much more bullish on the base you metals. You guys actually agree. Especially, wow. especially copper. Yeah. Because as soon as Trump and G get together and they're making some inroads right now, the base metal complex and especially copper is going to soar. The supply demand fundamentals for copper are absolutely compelling right now. And that market's been beaten down because yes. the speculators, the hedge funds have left the market because of this cloud hanging over, which is the trade terms. Yes. Guy? We have an insane setup for base metals and precious metals. Like, it, it, we're poised for a run. But as you said, there's uncertainty yeah. in the market, and that's not just from the macroeconomic standpoint, but we also got the mega mergers, especially in the gold space, holding us back a little bit. I think it's created a bit of a vacuum until people figure out what's actually going to happen, right? So I actually spoke with Rick Rule this morning, and he used the word glacial, like for 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 his February in and out flows. It was just glacial. There's nothing happening. Really? Right? Neither in nor out. It's just, and I see that continuing at least until this summer, or we have some more clarity on what Barrick and Newman are actually doing, because it, it does attract a lot of attention from the mid tiers. Unfortunately, juniors are ramping up or positioning themselves to buy those assets that might fall off their plate. But I would say overall, the movement we've seen with the big guys and the mergers and the possible losers has been very positive for the junior mining space. It's getting people interested again. We've started to see some generalists dip their toes in again into the space, and I think it's uh, uh, very exciting. And I think we should have a good year. That's my personal opinion. But We're so, set up for it. Excellent. So I'm not convinced. You're not. <laughs> and again, how do you sell those? <laughs> <laughs> Not I was, very well. I was about to say I'm going to leave it on that positive note. Thanks, Brett. So uh, once again for um, at the bar with Orin Inc. Thank you for joining us and cheers, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure. Cheers to a good year, right? Eh? Yes, to a good year. <laughs>